Hello. Hey guys. Nice to see everybody. Welcome to the art stream. With me. P.P. Ross. I hope you've all prepared for the occasion. I hope you've all got your flares on. Cause I have. And I'm ready to play. I hope you are too. You can all agree this is a no wig stream. There'll be no wigs involved. I've been to Turkey. <laughs> I've been to Turkey. to do anything in the world ever. This is a one-hour instructional tape designed to take you step-by-step step through a beautiful painting pro project. On this tape, we will paint a picture which has never been seen on the Joy of Painting television series, and we'll have sufficient time to demonstrate in detail the various steps and procedures used to create in individual effects. Detail. Think of this tape as a private lesson in my studio, and I've reserved this front row seat just for you. Good. Tell you what, though, before we get started, let me take just a moment of your time and talk a little bit about the equipment that we're going to be using today. First of all, the main two brushes that we'll use. We have here a two inch and a one inch natural bristle brush. Bob, you see, whereas you, Bob, may only have a two inch. Bitch, I've got a five inch. P.P. Ross, way bigger than Bob Ross. I know these may look like house painting brushes, but these are high quality artist brushes designed specifically for this technique. Don't confuse these with synthetic brushes such as nylon, polyester, and etc. It absolutely won't work. I feel like I really need a hole in my palette. Now this might be violent and it might get a bit crazy, but I think we should make a hole. I've got a great idea. I know what to do. two different knives. We have a number 10 knife, which is the larger of the two, and a number five knife. It's basically the same knife, only smaller, and it allows you to get into to smaller areas and, and do detail work. With these knives, you can create unbelievable effects. You can paint mountains and trees and roads and stones, rocks, Wait. houses. It's, it's unreal Wait. what you can do with those son of a guns. Where's the hammer gone? We'll be using a fan brush. Wait, this Bob, is a number six fan Bob. brush right here. Bob, where's the hammer? Now this is a bristle fan brush. It's quite firm, has a lot of spring to it. It's not a soft little delicate brush. It's quite, quite stiff. With that, you it's can do such like things it, as clouds, trees, quite, waterfalls, quite a multitude of beautiful effects it's just really using a fan stiff. brush. Also, in right the way now. of brushes, we'll be using a number two script liner brush. Now this is the brush that we use to do fine detail and most important. Fine detail, Bob, like a dick. So another thing that will help you, because if you've watched the television series, you know I, I beat the brush against the leg of the easel 
and paint thinner goes everywhere. He beats what way? Can ruin a happy marriage in a heartbeat. This is called a brush beater rack, and it's a just a little wire rack that goes in the bottom of a waste that. paper basket. And you shake the brush inside of the basket, then you beat the devil out of it right on these, right on these little wire things here, right across this rack. And let's take off, and we'll get started here today. As we mentioned earlier, normally the first thing we always do is cover the entire canvas with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. So we'll just dip the old two-inch brush right into the liquid white. Right. Straight out of the bat, we've got a problem. Straight out of the bat. What we're going to do is say, Bob, obviously, the canvas is already white, dickhead. So we're not going to do this part. Grow up, Bob. I can't see white on white without with the sunglasses on. I still can't see the white on the white. I I, I don't I don't know why. If anyone can see anything on the canvas, let me know. Probably the most common mistake made is applying too much of the liquid white. Don't apply All you too want much. It's just enough to cover the entire like me and canvas. Don't have enough, so you don't have the if you any. think you may have a little too much liquid white, one of the easiest ways to make sure, clean and dry your brush, and then go back over the entire canvas with a clean, dry brush. That'll pick up any excess liquid white, and your canvas will be just right then. Just right. A little, a little trick that you can do is take a little bit of liquid black and just put a tiny little bit into your liquid white, and it'll give it a, a gray cast. And then when you paint your white canvas, you can tell exactly where it's covered. Okay, long horizontal and vertical strokes, just to assure that you have a nice, even coating of liquid white over the entire surface. Scrub the bristles against the screen, the solid material settle to the bottom, and your paint thinner, it remains relatively clean. Shake off the excess, then... <laughs> and that's the fun part that? of this whole technique. Tell you what, let's make a happy little sky. I'm not doing that in the room, I've got carpet here. I'm going to go right into a touch of phthalo blue. Just a little bit, just pull a little bit of the color out and then tap the bristle, bristles firmly into the color. This will assure a nice... I have become very aware that we absolutely do not have enough paint to do any of the dumb shit that my brother Bob wants me to do. We haven't even got nearly enough paint. And who told me what paint to get? Fucking pixie. Shocker, I know. Now then, just using little crisscross strokes, um, begin no. laying in a basic sky. No, little crisscross. And start at the top and work downward. Oh. That way, that way your brush will pick up the liquid white oh. and automatically, automatically, your All of the liquid white that we definitely have a lot of underneath. Color gets lighter toward the horizon. Let the canvas work, let the liquid white work, let your brush work. You just enjoy. You just enjoy. Pick up. Because painting you should make you happy. Should be a fun experience. Just crisscrossing it in. Oh, I'd look at it blending in with all that primer underneath it. It's just blending in. Oh yeah, it's, bl it's blending in so well. It's that white primer really coming in clutch. Uh, just doing the crisscrosses. And it's almost like there's no primer underneath it. Just happy little crisscrosses. Happy little crisscrosses. Happy little crisscrosses. Look at all the crisscrosses and the, the way the white's really shining through. Look how beautiful and <laughs> crisscrossy it looks. Oh yeah. A little touch of water in this painting. I love water and it's always fun to do. 
So I'm going to take, go right back into my Thalo Blue, reach right over here and grab a touch, just a touch of the Thalo Green. Don't need much of that. It's very strong. Just a touch. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. And just tap it into the bristles again. Just tap it. Okay. Now decide where you just want the water to be. And pull from the outside tap, 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 in. Tap, tap, tap. Start on the outside, pull in. Start on the bottom, just a touch. work up. So it gets lighter and lighter toward the horizon. Just a touch. Now see if you start, if you start here and go over, it leaves a very distinct line, which is hard to blend out. I don't see what he's doing. Okay. But you can if you, if you oh, happen to forget. Oh, more blue. Oh. Blend from the outside in. And leave a little air, area open. Right, right we're right using a different blue. Look like a little sheen of light coming across the water when we're done. Start at the bottom, work upward, let it get lighter and lighter toward the top. Lighter and lighter. What if we use... Just like so. I use a blue. There we go. A, light, a lighter blue. See how easy that is? That's all there is to it. See how easy that is, you idiots? Decide where your cloud lives. Maybe he lives right in here. That can be the barely even tell the difference. And just make tiny little circles. Tiny little circles, round and round and round. And a little. Don't stay in one place and keep working. If you just stay in one place here and, and keep grinding Three the paint, fully erect you end up with big cotton balls up in the sky. Did he say cotton balls then? Two inch brush. Two inch brush makes fantastic clouds. Okay, now with a clean, dry, Two inch brush. Use the oh, top corner it. of the brush and you want to blend just the base of these clouds out. Not touching the top yet, just blend. See, very lightly, very, very lightly. Yeah, you, you guys like keep it so. counter for me. Just barely, barely blending. Okay, now we're going to fluff it. And this, we're going to do it in big circular patterns. Grab it gently and fluff it upward. I think we're in a bit of trouble. Look, can you tell the difference? You can't even, can't even tell the difference. We will put another happy little cloud in here. Another maybe this other cloud. cloud, maybe he lives right over here. Just another happy little cloud. Same thing, tiny little circles. Tiny little circles. And just drop him in wherever you think okay. he should live. He lives right there. And in your world, you put a cloud where you want it. You don't necessarily need to put a cloud where I do. You put it where you think. If oh. you think it lives somewhere else, then that's where it ought to be. There we go. Lift it gently, lift it, and very lightly just go across it. And that easy. We got another happy little cloud right there.
cloud. Absolutely no problem. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off the old fan brush. Mm -hmm. okay, I've I just noticed some... his clouds are way bigger than mine. And if there's one thing Bob doesn't have, is anything bigger than me. Let's go again. Back in here, there's just a small little mountain that lives. So let's take a touch of Prussian blue, a little bit of uh, midnight black. Oh, another We're blue. Get a little touch of a lizard crimson. So right. Blue, black, lizard crimson. Right. Maybe even a little Van Dyke brown. What the heck? Right. What the heck? Just drop it in. Dark color. Right. Okay. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Just as really flat mash as you can down get hard. It. And take your Come knife on, and cut across. See there? Get that little roll of paint. This knife has a straight edge on it. And by having a straight edge, it's very easy to load it. Let's go on up here. Very easy to okay. load it. Let and me teach maybe, you how to load it, maybe Bob. Maybe little mountain. Okay, i got to make a big decision here. Maybe he lives right here. Just floats around in the clouds. Push no, Bob, very I'm going to be firmly. honest with you. You can't to piss me off. Very firmly. Let me just, We're trying to push this color right into the Let me just stop fabric. you right there, Bob. Let me just stop you right there, Bob. Let's just pull it back a second, Bob. Okay. Just decide where you want little bumps to live. See, there's one. <clears throat> wherever, wherever you want them. Maybe there's a happy little thing lives right there. It's hard time. Scrape off all the excess paint. Just really get in there and scrape hard. Uh -huh. No pressure. See, follow the angles in the mountain. Uh -huh. Absolutely no pressure. Okay, maybe right here. Oh, yeah. I think where light would strike. Yeah. White's going to work I really well for the sun that. would shine through yeah. and create all these beautiful little mm -hmm. effects. And if you're right-handed, it's normally easier for the light to come from the right uh, side. Uh, normally easier. Uh, See? Very Andy delicate. Pie, thank you stuff. for 52 months. Welcome back here. Yeah. Very delicate. Very, very delicate. This is a time when a little knife left? would come in Oh, even there's so much. So you can get back here with a little knife and get these little places. So much white the left. The of a gun just sneaks right in there. Either knife works very well. They both have the, the straight edges and they work very good. Take a little bit of blue and white. This is a little phthalo blue. Just a touch. Just a touch. Get a shadow here. Let it come down distinctly through. See there? Just 
distinctly through. No pressure at all. Oh, yeah. Think in your mind that the only thing touching the canvas is that little tiny roll of paint. Mm -hmm. And each little highlight needs a shadow. If it doesn't have a shadow, it won't come out and play with you. It'll just leave you. Just what? leave you stranded. Hang okay, on then. Sometimes it's fun to play some games. All right, clean dry brush. I'm gonna tap the base of this following the angles. Tap it. I wanna create mist. Now lift upward very softly. Three hairs and some air over here. Follow these angles. Lift, lift, blend. See, it just softens that sun of a gun right down there. Uh -huh. Okay, now then. Uh -huh. Dryer I could use. No, Pixie, this perm is natural. What are you talking about, hair dryer? All right, there's only one thing we can do. We're gonna have to attack this with pink. a big decision here. Where does your little foothills live? Maybe let's start right in here. Maybe just yeah, use right the corner there. of the brush. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they just come dirty. right down. Right there. Here they come. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Pink. Pink and hills. Just sort of, sort of pull it straight down. Yeah, but they look pink though, right, Bob? Turn it over and use the other corner. If one gets two inches gets of empty, pink, Bob. You can turn it over. Just pull straight down. 
Okay, but what color do you very think? Very important here. See this little misty area right in here? You want to save that mist that's between the foothill and the mountain. If you if you kill that misty area, these foothills are going to look like they're right up against the So I'm coming into the bowl. The mountain, and you don't want that. That easy though. It's that easy. And I'll show you, show you something that's fun here. Maybe you decide in here. Maybe there's a little separation, and this one comes. Yeah, the little separation. Right on down here. So right on can, down here. You can sort of pull them apart and make we'll more than one. We'll pull them apart. We'll pull them apart like that a pair of butt cheeks. And you just take them wherever you want them to go. We'll take them wherever we want to go, Bob. Wherever we want to go. But isn't that one super way to make some happy little foothills? And they're that easy. That easy. Tell you what, let's do. Let me find, uh, there it is. Now pull this brush through the paint, and as you pull it through, wiggle it. See? Wiggle it. And then sharpen it. That'll bring the brush to a super sharp chisel edge. Super sharp edge. There you can see it. it's very sharp. Touch it with this, that Touch nice it. chisel edge. Wait, we could turn that into a dig. Don't kill that little misty area that's in between. And every so often, reload your brush to bring it back to a nice sharp edge. And you can begin dropping in all kinds of just happy little distant trees. <laughs> Perfect. It's it's almost exactly like his. It's stunning, absolutely stunning. You can tell that they're definitely trees and not just random black lines. Look how look how tree-like those black lines are. It just kind of blends in. Unnoticeable. Let's build a little water line. For that, I'm gonna take a touch of the liquid white and put it on my palette. Just pull it out and then lightly cut across. That's all there is to it. See, there's a little bit of paint right up on. Use a firm for keep these lines basically straight. Basically straight. See? 
Happy there. Just cut in a happy little water line. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that be. a hammer? Look at that. Isn't that super? And you can do it. You can do it. Let's begin putting some foreground in here. Yeah. Let's take a big bunch of the Prussian blue, black, brown, oh, I don't know, crimson, sap green. It doesn't matter. Whatever you have, shoot, just drop it in there. Dark colors. Dark colors. Look at that. Might as well mix up a big water paint. Okay, let me clean off my knife. Today, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's use, shoot, we'll just use an old two inch brush. You could, you could do this with a fan brush, a uh, one inch brush, it doesn't matter. I'll use a two inch today. Pull it through the paint, wiggling two it. Two inch. See, let's decide, maybe there's a happy tree, evergreen tree, he lives right there. Start with just touching the canvas, use just the corner of the brush, just the corner, and begin pushing, making the bristles bend slightly downward. See there? Look at that. Whoa, 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 what's nice this? Nice little tree. And he lives what's right this? here in this brush. What, what's he making? All you there? have to do is sort of push him out. Each time you start a new evergreen, reload the brush to a nice sharp chisel edge. Go through the same procedure. Let's have that another been a dig. Maybe he lives soup right that there. That could have been a Just huge make a decision call. and drop him in. Wherever you want him. There he goes. There he goes. One of the questions I get asked quite frequently, what if I do a tree and decide I don't like him? Or maybe I'll make him taller. Watch here, watch here. Let's watch. say, well, I hate to mess up his tree, but I, mean, I want to show you this. It's a good watch. tree. Maybe you want to make his tree taller. All you have to do is touch. Touch. And come right back over the top of him. See here? And you just paint a bigger tree right over the top. <sighs> we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And you have a brand new, beautiful tree. That easy. Look at sticks and twigs and people will think you work for weeks doing this with a little one hairy brush. See, if you want them to be wider, stronger, turn the knife and they'll get thicker. And you can put limbs on trees or whatever you want, just doing this. Most of these will be covered up, as I say. Let's put a few on the other side over here. Just here and there. Okay. Now then, over here, let's have some reflections. So take the big brush, decide where you want reflections and, and land to meet. Grab and just pull it straight down. Straight down. Down. The liquid white is still wet. It stays wet for several days on a good canvas. And the paint will move. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, tap, you can turn tap, tap, what was land right into reflections. That easy. Then go lightly across. Okay. I'm going to grab an old one inch brush here. Now then, it rounds one corner. Look right up here. You can see how it's round on that corner. With that rounded corner to the top, take, go slightly above the dark, give it the least little touch, and just push slightly upward. You're just barely bending the bristles. It's a delicate little touch, no pressure. And then work in layers, working downward. See there? There we go, down, down. Just decide where your tree lives and, and pay him in. That's all you have to do. But think about limbs that are projecting towards you. They're not just all going out the sides. And don't just hit it random. Look at it. Get a, get a feel for it. One of the best things you can do is, is take some time and, and go out in your yard or go out in the woods and, and study trees. Make friends with a tree. Talk to him. Then you'll get to understand him. Glorious PP. -pee. 
What will I do with the picture? Some future charity stream? Oh yeah, because someone's really going to want to get this. Someone's just itching to have this sent through to them in the post. I feel like we might be coming to the end of this painting. It's so overwhelmingly perfect. There might not be anything else we can do to it to make it better. What do I do with this now? Where do I put this? Slap! Ah! Pick up. I don't think this through at all. Stream. And I'll see you all again soon.